everyone, welcome to Beach Investing. I'm your host, Andre Angelkowski. We're here in Atopico. We're in the prime beaches in Toronto, and we're about to look at the most ideal beach property. Hey everyone, welcome to Beach Investing. I'm your host, Andre Angelkowski. We're here at in the prime beaches in the Beach Triangle, giving you the final reveal of this luxurious triplex that my clients have created. Uh, we're gonna go inside, take you through a walkthrough of all the units, and introduce you to the owners and talk to them about their experience. Come on, follow me. Hello, Hi guys. How are you? Welcome to our home. Thank you, thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Andre. That's Rose, and this is Andre. Andre? Yeah. <laughs> he was supposed to wear a, 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 a Sens jersey, but. Uh, I won the bet, so <laughs> he didn't put on his leaf jersey. So uh, we can go on up, uh, and would you like to walk us through the uh, upstairs? This is your your unit, right? Yes, this is our home. All right. So welcome to our home. Uh, as you saw, it's a second level unit, so we do have a main floor entryway that we come in off of the front of the street and we get to enjoy a lovely front yard. Uh, we have a landing pad and a closet there, and then we come up into this beautiful open concept space. And if you guys remember the, the progress video, the before video, this was completely different. Like It's just like, wow, um, I'm amazed with what you guys have done. Uh, if you guys don't mind uh, giving us some idea of, like, well, I guess for numbers reasons, yeah. you bought it for nine fifty ish, right? Yeah, yeah, that's. And the amount of money that you uh, renovation money that you put into this. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so it ended up being uh, close to five hundred and fifty uh, for all the renovation costs. Uh, yeah, some challenges along the way, but uh, this is what we ended up with, and we're we're very happy with the, the final product. So this is a legal triplex? Absolutely, yeah. Fully legal triplex. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so we have, right here, we have the open concept kitchen. Like, your, your kitchen is stunning. Thank you. <laughs> I put a lot of work into it. Like, it truly is. Like, it's so, like, entertaining. Like, I, I love it. Like, I love the different colors. Like, did you guys design this yourself? We did, yeah. We designed it in concert with a um, cabinet maker, um, but Pretty much all of the finishes and even the design we uh, did ourselves and it was actually supposed to be different there was some, in the original architect's drawings there was a island here and it was double wide um, and because this is such an old house one of the things that we discovered once we tore down the walls was there were no studs so no studs there were no studs <laughs> so we lost eight inches of width because we had to insulate and we just had, it was plaster on brick. So we lost eight inches, which meant we had to completely redesign our kitchen on the fly. Um, thankfully, I love the outcome. And it actually, one of the lovely benefits that came from that, so lesson learned, you can actually get some really nice things out of problems, is all of these stools. We wouldn't have had all of this lovely entertaining space where people can sit and enjoy while you cook a gourmet meal. And yeah, you know, like alt C, so you have little little features that a landlord wouldn't typically do this. Yeah. But when you do do it, you actually do attract higher end tenant profiles and people who are willing to pay a premium for those bells and whistles. Yes. So you have built-in speakers. Yes, we do. So at very high end built-in speakers <laughs> because I'm a little bit of an audiophile. Um, so we have two left and right speakers in the kitchen that are really designed to be heard by the person doing the cooking. And then we have a 5.1 surround sound uh, in wall and in ceiling speakers in our living room with a small sub off to the side. So uh, they are in two separate zones. You're able to have it be all throughout and have a really great party surround sound music throughout the house or you're able to just listen to music in the kitchen or just listen to your TV in the living room. I love it. I do too. So I know you guys are, are living here, mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll see the unit and then we'll, I'll ask the question. 
Sounds good. Okay, so, so I know here you're supposed to have a, you're supposed to have a walkout balcony, right? Yes. So the, it's going to be a deck eventually. Uh, it's just been one of those things that was easier to put off uh, and didn't stop us from moving in. Uh, but the door is there. And it's blocked off at the moment. But I do find myself standing there longingly waiting to go out, uh, and, it, and it will happen eventually. All right. Okay. So let's let's continue on here. Uh, your dining area. So you actually have a formal dining, formal living, open common kitchen with a massive island, peninsula. It's just phenomenal. And then you have a, a den here. Yeah. And what do you guys use this den for? For an office? Office, uh, storage, wine fridge, extra pantry space, all of the above. It's really just sort of a versatile space for us to store things. Um, that isn't kind of out in our living space. Okay. Especially in Toronto, storage space is hard to come by, so it's nice to actually have something, especially in your main living space where you can go yeah, to. Absolutely. Then you have a convenient powder room here mm -hmm. for desks to use. Yes. And uh, what about this big room over here? So over here is our master. Um, when we purchased this house, the roof here started this high, but came down on a slope to about this high. And so we actually um, raised everything and flattened the, uh, the ceiling so that we could make this our master suite. Um, put in a big window because there it used to be actually all windows, you know, like a wraparound porch kind of situation. Um, but we've modified this. So this is one of the areas that was uh, modified the most from a building perspective. Mm -hmm. And then within this master suite, we were able to fit a king size bed, uh, which was key for us. And uh, you can't go back, FYI, if you ever actually do buy a king size bed, just be forewarned that queen size beds suddenly become very, very small. I know. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> uh, we have a really large closet space uh, within the bedroom room for a, uh, a large dresser and uh, an ensuite bathroom. So this is another kind of special feature that we added just because we have a young daughter as well. Uh, we wanted, we knew this, this area would kind of be a bit of a, a hazard for so we, uh, so we had our contractor build a custom, custom baby gate here so it's fully built in and fully removable as well uh, and it just kind of looks nicer and finishes off the space uh, pretty nicely. And it's, uh, yeah, it blends, like, it, it's basically your railing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we didn't want to constantly have a baby gate there that was taking away from the aesthetics yeah. um, and just have it be nice either when it's opened or closed and not have to store anything. Very creative. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember this area here. Like, you even have like a very um, custom made uh, rads, like uh, heating rads. Vents, yeah. So this is one of the few areas, this floor is the only floor that actually has heating vents in the floor. And because of the uniqueness of this space where, you know, you have low ceilings and a bit of an awkward space that you're trying to get through, you, we wanted to have vents where people would be able to walk on them mm. and not feel encumbered. Okay. Uh, I see I know there's another baby gate here. Mm -hmm. And uh, behind you is the... Uh, doors to the furnace. That's the furnace only for this for this yeah. unit. Uh, so yeah, this is our. It will eventually be a second kids' bedroom. Uh, right now, it's mostly being used to store all of the baby stuff that you accumulate with a two-year-old. Um, but it's it's a really beautiful bedroom. It's one of I I was so impressed with our architect's use of space and being able to squeeze as much as he could out of the space. Things like vaulting the ceiling make a small space feel a lot bigger and uh, being yeah, able to sort of inset this and instead of making it a closet, have it be a, a nook where you can tuck a bed or a crib and it just allows you to use the space a lot better. Okay. And uh, here's your uh, laundry. Yes. So in-state laundry. Um, Large. <laughs> Very large. Laundry. You have nice cabinets uh, or, or countertop here too. Yes. So this was all sort of custom designed and built um, around the fact that when you're dealing with a three bedroom unit, and for us, you're probably dealing with people 
have kids uh, and laundry becomes a ever increasingly important part of your life. So having a, a good space and a large unit to be able to handle that was important to us. So you have another bedroom over here. Um, it's too bad, you know, it would be nice to have a bathroom up here. Oh, ask. <laughs> oh, okay. Tucked away. <laughs> you would never know. But yeah, there's actually a four piece bath up here. Four piece. So you have three bathrooms in this unit. We have three bathrooms in this unit. We have one bathroom that has a bathtub, and it was important for us to have a bathtub in each of the units so that we uh, accommodated people who were going to have kids or who had a pet that needed to be washed or we're just like taking baths. But I know that it's a trend right now to have these beautiful stand-up showers and that's what we chose for master. our master because they are lovely and you can do more exciting things with them. You can have a rain shower head and you can have dual zone showers. Yep. Um, but when it comes to people with kids or people with pets, it's important to accommodate that. Well, this is gonna be the, likely the kids' room so they get to have baths. Exactly. All right, and the, and the final bedroom here? So this is the final bedroom. This is our current, uh, our daughter Juliet's room right now. And uh, yeah, it turned out really nice. They are, they are a bit smaller rooms, but we made uh, good use of the space. And again, the vaulted ceilings uh, make it look a lot bigger than, than the room actually is, so. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna ask you the question that I was going to ask you downstairs. So because you're living here, mm -hmm. you're not renting it out. Mm -hmm. But maybe one day you'll decide to move out. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to rent this out, your estimated rent would be? Uh, yeah, just, just looking at comparables, we're, we're looking in the high 3,000, so probably 3,800. Plus utility, because Plus you utilities. your own furnace, your own yeah. hydrometer. Yeah, everything. exactly. Okay. That's yeah, so a pretty good number is on, uh, on that. Yeah, and you're in the heart of the beach, so that is very doable, mm -hmm. and definitely there's comparables that show that. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's go down to the um, main floor apartment now. That's good. So we're uh, entering the main floor apartment now, which is a two bedroom, one bath. And you enter from the back of the house. So here there's a laneway. So you're, you actually, you're able to get the legal access. Um, but there's two parking spots. One of them is yours. Yeah. And then the other one you're offering for uh, rent or yeah, ideally for the main floor tenant, but yeah. whoever, whoever wants it. Really. Okay. And roughly what's the ask on that uh, parking? Uh, parking around 100. Maybe 150, but I think 100 is pretty safe. Okay. Uh, so you have, you've offered them a, a deck so they can put barbecues and lawn chairs. Uh, all right, that's uh, go into the main floor. Um, so you may have been able to guess that kitchens are sort of an important piece of the home for me. Uh, I really like to cook, so when I was designing the kitchens, I put a lot of thought and care into what they look like uh, and how functional they are. Because something can look really beautiful but be really dysfunctional for, from a cooking standpoint and that drives me crazy. So I wanted to make sure that whoever was moving in here got the benefit of something that was truly a functional gourmet kitchen. So in our tenant units we put these beautiful uh, glass top stoves and ovens and then we have an over the range hood. Oh, sorry, over the range microwave. Uh, in our unit, we actually put in a gas oven uh, and stove because uh, that's what I like to cook on, but they do require more maintenance. They're a little bit more dangerous. And so in a tenant unit, we wanted something that would be easy for them to clean, easy for them to maintain and safe. Uh, we tried to put in as much cabinet space as possible. And then some of the more fun features are things like spice poles. Uh, these are things that cost a little bit more money, but attract people and they're, they're the thing that people remember when they've gone through boxers, right? They're the thing that they come home and they go, oh yeah, and you remember they had that specific thing. It only costs a little bit more, but it's just a bit of a standout feature. Um, we put in full-size dishwashers in all of the units because I think that's becoming more and more important to everybody. Nobody really likes to do things by hand. Um, and, uh, and then yeah, just lots of drawer space and we tried to make as much use of the storage as possible. So this cabinet actually goes all the way into the back. So you have, you know, because it's an island and has an overhang, you can actually put seats there 
and we can eat here. Mm -hmm. um, and then when people walk in, so this is something we thought about, which is very good. Mm -hmm. People walk in like, oh, but I, where's, where do I put my coats? Where do I put my shoes? Well, you actually have space underneath your shoes. You have drawers here that you can put stuff in, yeah. and you can hang up your coats yeah. in all these areas, and then more storage. Yes, all up here. And so this is really a transitional space. It's a space that can be used either as a drop point for your entryway, which it is, um, but it can also be used as additional storage for kitchen items. Those yeah, larger, that's true too, yeah. massive bowls that nobody knows where to put, those can go up there. And we have, we have more full depth uh, custom cabinetry surrounding the fridge. Um, and the fridges in all of the units, we try to sort of maximize the amount of space that people had in their fridge to be able to store food. And although this is a narrow fridge, it's actually pretty high end. Like you have separate high. drawers and like, this is, this is not your typical rental quality of finishes and, and you went over and above. You really created this into a luxury. All three apartments are luxurious. Yes. And this apartment, we'll see the rest, but I'll ask you right now. You've, you've advertised it, I think, for rent for a few days or something? Yeah. And you've already had an application. Yes. So you've advertised it for 2800, 2800 plus utilities. Plus utilities, plus parking. Plus parking. Yes. And people love this unit. They love it. And I mean, part of it is just, yeah, you can see all of the windows, all of the natural light. Um, one of my favorite features is, is one of the windows where we've actually put the countertop all the way deep to the windows. It's these little things that people remember. And, uh, and when you're showing it, like I always try to tell the story of like, this is how I imagine people living here. This is what you can use this space for. Um, this unit particularly has it is open concept, but it has a bit of a smaller living space. But if you're one person, one couple, you can use one of the bedrooms as a living space instead and have your TV in the second bedroom and use this as a full just eat-in kitchen and then it becomes huge. Mm -hmm. So talking through that with your prospective tenants really makes a difference and not just having, uh, not leaving them to their own devices when it comes to imagining what the space is gonna be. So you actually really, you raise a very valid point and I do want to uh, actually emphasize this point because people believe that it's all about just opening up the door and letting the tenant go through and just figuring it out themselves, which is fine, but if you really want to sell, not sell the tenant, but like show them how it can actually work, exactly what you just said, come in and tell them the story, tell them why you designed the kitchen like this. And they will recognize that you put actually a lot of care into this and you are actually a great landlord and they'll want to move here. They'll, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a touching point. They'll remember it. Yes. So well done on that. So again, you have the open concept kitchen and living room. And you can put your couch there, your TV here, or vice versa. You can do both because you have actually yeah, we decided to give them the option to put a, a cable outlet in, in both areas. Yeah. And we also even, we tried to maximize every bit of storage that we could, so we can have another little pantry under here, so. Pantry, and then we actually put a coax cable inside there, so you can have your Wi-Fi router in that little cabinet and keep it out of sight. So these little touches, and that's one of those things that your tenants are never going to know if you don't tell them. Absolutely. It's walking them through and pointing at these things and saying, this is how you can use the space. So the even when you're designing this place, like how did you think about you know that option? Because that's a detail that when you're stressed and overwhelmed with all the renovations, how do you even possibly think about that? I, I think having two sort of different individuals uh, is <laughs> is really useful for that because Andre took care of a lot of the more routine but very difficult tasks of making sure that. The schedule was on time and the bills were getting paid and uh, coordinating with our contractors and really staying on top of people, which is so important and is a huge part of the stress of a renovation. Yeah. Um, and then having another person who's a little bit more eye level, big picture thinking, and for me especially, I really, really care about the function of the space. And having rented and lived in many, many different spaces, you start to learn what works and what doesn't, and what would you have liked to see in a space? I designed these spaces to be spaces that I would have loved to live in. And 
it's there's value in people who want to turn over a space and just make it available for rent and try to um, maximize that and have a large portfolio. That's not what we were doing. We were really trying to make spaces that would be homes for people, um, attract tenants that wanted to stay longer term, and that would be family friendly spaces. And you've done that. Yeah. Okay. Show us the, uh, the bedrooms and the rest of the units. So yeah, before we get into the bedrooms, um, in all of the suites we did have in-unit laundry, these are smaller units than the ones in ours because they're two bedroom units. We sort of assumed you're not going to have quite as much laundry as a three bedroom unit would require. Um, and these are, again, very high end units. They're Samsung with the same brand that we used for ourselves. So we didn't change the level of quality between the unit we were going to live in and the units that the tenants were going to live in. I like the sliding doors. That adds a nice touch. Yes. I'm really a big fan of this too. So in, uh, instead of having doors that would swing open and then block off your hallway, we tried to really make sure that it was going to feel open and airy. In Toronto, space is a premium. So having things like barn doors that actually have an aesthetic element as well and don't just serve a function, it adds almost a piece of art in the unit at very little extra cost and really maximizes the space. So behind the other side of this barn door is a closet where people can store their winter gear. And uh, again, just trying to think through how are people actually gonna use the space? Because yes, we have a landing spot. We have those hooks and drawers for people to store shoes, but we have um, a closet here for the rest of it. And then you have more closets over there. This is actually our utilities. Oh my goodness, okay. So um, we have in-unit utilities for each of the units. So this, like if there's ever, God forbid, a flood, people can come right here and they don't have to call us. They don't have to be worried about what that's gonna mean. There is a little tiny bit of additional storage, but we fully separated it. It's part of how you end up with illegal track lines. And we didn't even put door handles on these so that we didn't you didn't knock into anything as you were passing. Yeah. We just made these these little finger pulls. And I also noticed that in all the apartments so far you have uh, is it echo gate? Yeah, it's an echo gate. So everything is controlled here. You can set it from your phone. Very high tech. People really enjoy that. Um, yes, and each tenant has like control of their own. Yes, yeah, so it's all separate. Everything is like you might as well be living in your own house. These are essentially completely separate homes. Okay. And then behind you is the, uh, the bathroom? Yeah, so we have one bathroom in this unit. So this is really the only sort of feature difference between the basement and the main floor. Um, the main floor only has the one bathroom, but uh, all of our bathrooms we finished to you know luxury standards. With the LED mirrors and uh, in floor radiant heating as well for our tenants. We didn't just do that for us. And, uh, and the Bluetooth fans as well. So we have that in all of our units. And that just works by, uh, again, connecting your phone and you get to jam to some tunes while you get ready in the morning. And then uh, bedroom number two? Yeah, so this we sort of imagined as a master. Um, it's Again, trying to maximize the space, we put sliding doors in the closet so that if your bed is here and you're trying to walk by, you don't have a door in your way when you're opening it up. And um, we tried to make it so that every little nook and cranny was open to being able to put furniture in and to have really useful space. Okay, so this is the main floor apartment, uh, renting for 2,800 plus utilities and if they want parking. Upstairs we talked about is would be roughly what you're living in, but if we were to rent it out, it would be roughly 3,800 plus utilities and parking. Mm -hmm. So now let's go look at the, the, the basement. Let's do it. All right. Okay, so we're heading into the basement apartment now, which is through the side entrance. And uh, I see you guys have paved, paved this, uh, or repaved this. Yeah. To make it a lot more uh, I guess cleaner and easier. And you have motion detectors, which is for safety reasons, I think it's a great feature to put in. And anything else you want to comment about here? We have the three separated 
water meters, and you can see some of the utility services along here. This is where a lot of that sort of behind the scenes work ends up happening. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we, we really ran into a lot of issues that were not uh, foreseen, I guess, and, and this pathway being one of them. Okay. But you just, when you confront them, you have to do them. You get sort of this one shot, and if you can do it, you should do it. Yeah. All right, let's move to Facebook. I do want to point out before we go down, uh, when people do walk in, behind the door is where you put your coats and your um, your, your shoes, and you have a bench there to put them on. So I, I found that to be a very good feature as well. That so we're in the, the basement area, we came down the stairs and we have this uh, L-shaped kitchen, uh, open concept to the, the living room. Um, again, uh, very high end. And the ceiling height here is? 8 feet. Yes, yeah, so it's right at 8 feet. If you look at the previous video, uh, I believe it was hitting your head. Yeah, yeah. Right now, we're down there, so right around 6'2 six, well, six or so. So, yeah, so we dug down a good, uh, good 2 feet with all, with all the finishings and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, then we even added uh, hydronic and floor heat heating. So the, uh, there's no furnace in this unit. All the heating actually comes, comes from the floor, which is which we thought was a pretty, uh, pretty good feature, especially for, for our basement. Uh, in the usual basements, you'll, uh, your feet will get cold, so we thought we'd add that in just as an extra extra feature. But this has air conditioning as well, but the yeah. ductless ones, there in, is there just one? Or is there uh, there's one there, and there's one in the bedroom, so they can uh, yeah. talk to each other and, and cool it down. Okay, so you're standing in the, um, the living room, this is could be an uh, eat in dining room? Yeah, so the intent here, and again, sort of trying to make tenants see how you can use the space, the intent was potentially to put a small countertop level um, table in here so that you could end up with an island and have like an eat-in kitchen sort of space, but you can do really whatever you want with it. Um, everything in here is the same finishes as on the main floor, except for the fridge. Uh, as we sort of discussed, we really wanted to make each of the kitchens as usable as possible. So this fridge is very, very tall but skinny so that we could use the space to maximize everything and actually get drawers in there, which was a difficult piece. Mm -hmm. And we managed to even in this space squeeze in, again, a full-size dishwasher, an over-the-range microwave. It has all of the same features. Yeah, so feature that actually had to fit these in, because uh, originally I think we had a smaller stove and, a, and an 18-inch dishwasher. We really wanted to fit in full-size. Fine. So what we actually did is we bumped out the kitchen probably around a foot and a half or so so we could fit these things in and what that allowed us to do was add like an extra storage on the back here so either kind of a, a bar thing or a, a pantry just additional storage for uh for the tenant so yeah this is actually you can that's a great feature yeah the added storage you can never have enough storage right yeah it so. could even function as a dry bar yeah a little stool over there, store all of your liquor, and it becomes part of your living room. So it's, it's really up to the person who's living here what that becomes. It's a very useful space. Uh, one thing as I noticed is you have a very deep, good size window that adds a lot of natural light, so it doesn't really have that basement feel, especially with the ceiling yeah. height. Yeah, so that was important to us. We wanted to add at least at least one of them. The, the other ones, we, we weren't really able to do that just because they were along the pathway, so we couldn't add the, uh, the window well, but for this one, uh, we wanted to make it as big as possible, and then it turned out pretty good. Yeah, and, and in, in behind here is the um, uh, sewage ejector. Yes, yeah. so just because you went to the little bit of so you have to get it out. Yeah. And let's uh, continue on. You see the uh, first the you know, so here's the a three piece bathroom. So stand up shower. So again, the same tile pretty much throughout all the bathrooms. Uh, we also added uh, niches to, to pretty much every shower and, uh, and, and bathroom bed that we had, just for, again, just that extra little touch. Yep. Uh, again, the, the light of mirrors again uh, in, each, in each of the bathrooms. And we tried to select um, cabinets that had as much storage as possible. All of these units are somewhat small so you can't really put a ton of stuff on top of the cabinets so we really wanted to make sure that whatever we were selecting had as much usable storage as possible and 
you have actually more storage uh, up here underneath the stairs. Mm -hmm. You have more storage here? Yeah, so similar to the main floor unit, the idea was, yeah, you have a landing space right at the door, you have your hooks and a place to drop your shoes, but it's nice to actually have a place to store your winter coats or, you know, your, your off-season wear. Yeah. Side-by-side -side laundry, again, Samsung. Uh, and then one bedroom, so you have two bedrooms in this, uh, in this basement apartment. This is the first one, and you have a good sized window for natural light. You have a closet. And this, and this last bedroom here in the back of the house, would this be considered your master? Yeah, so yeah, so we would consider this a master just because it has the, the additional long suite bathroom here. Yeah. And uh, it, it is a little bit bigger as well. Mm -hmm. So the master on suite, this is the tub one, so and all those same features. Yeah, the same uh, same features again, the LED mirrors, the uh, same tile and the blue tint uh, fan as well. The difference here being that we didn't put in floor heating because the entire apartment has in floor heating. Oh, okay. So that includes the bathrooms, so no need to add it there. And then so you have a uh, bedroom closet there, but then in here is um, yeah. This is the uh, the utility room, which would uh, I guess could also be used as a little bit of storage. And uh, yeah, so here we have the the sub pump and the and the boiler. Okay, so uh, this apartment, what do you have uh, advertised for rent? Yeah, we have it listed right now for twenty five hundred a uh, month plus utilities. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Okay. You seem to think that's a, that's a good number, so. The challenge, I think, is actually getting people to see it. Because once you come through, I think you sort of fall in love with the space. I, I love the layout of this unit. Mm -hmm. um, I love the main floor for the natural light, and I know that's appealing to a lot of people, but the layout of this unit is just so functional. You have two bathrooms, two bedrooms, a eat-in kitchen, and a living room that are open concept to each other. That's unheard of in a space this size. Like what our architect was able to do with the floor plan was really incredible. Um, so what we've been trying to do is when people come and are more interested in the main floor, also showing them the basement is showing them that it doesn't feel like a basement. You have these really high ceilings, you have these high end finishes, and you have a really functional space. All right. So uh, I do want to, uh, you know, applaud you guys for what you've done here. I know that you've come across a lot of challenges as well. So. Um, going beyond all that stuff uh, what's the one lesson that you can share with someone or for our viewers that you maybe say you know what if, if you were to do this all over again this is what i would do maybe differently yeah the biggest lesson for me was just in it for, for the contractor selection uh, we had to change contractors uh, pretty much halfway through and uh would just be we we wish we would have uh ended our relationship with the first contractor a lot earlier there were a lot of uh warning signs that came up uh, that we just tried to power through and, and kind of work with them on it, but at the end of the day, we had to make the change. And looking back on it, we really should have ended that a lot earlier. And the uh, the contractor that we ended up with, uh, Jeff, who uh, who you work with, quite often came uh, came through and, and really helped us out and, and finish it off. Uh, uh, had the same vision as us, and he had the the, the right experience, and uh, ended up yeah. being a much better product than what would have been if we would have stuck with the uh, the original guy. How do you? I think along the same lines, it, it, when you're in it, you have this sense that every day counts, that you have to push through, that you can't make changes, that you can't, you know, you're stuck with the person you've originally hired because that's going to delay your project. And I think sort of acknowledging your own biases and acknowledging that it is a really stressful process and uh, cash is flying out the door and it's eating up all of your time and trying to sort of make past that and recognize that you're going to end up with this amazing product in the end uh, and that at the end of the day an additional couple of weeks isn't going to make or break you. So if it's, something's going to delay you a little bit but you're going to end up with a better product as a result, it's probably worth it. Um, and then I guess the second big thing is have cash on hand. Uh, things come up and you end up getting quite close to your margins and having to, to create more outlays and maybe find additional funding. So knowing uh, where those potential additional funds are coming from and having them available is really key. And you did end up with a quite exceptional product. So 
Congratulations to you both. Thank you. All the best. Thanks. Take care, guys. Thanks.